Um, I don't see any attendees yet, but I guess I'll just get started so you guys have as much time as possible. Um, welcome to the Virtual college, college Exploration for All California Students, sponsored by the College to Career Fairs and Strife Scan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot hear you. There are different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at college to career affairs .org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we're going to go ahead and get started and welcome you all. We're so excited you're all here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get started with um, our presentation. Awesome. So um, like I said, hello and welcome. We are so excited you are all here tonight uh, to learn more about our programs in agriculture, including veterinary and marine biology. We have five institutions represented this evening to tell you more about what our schools and programs have to offer. So we'll just do a brief introduction. My name is Natasha Roberts. I'm the Regional Recruitment Specialist here in California for the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I'm located in North San Diego County. Sorry to unmute myself. I'm Julie Scroggs. I'm the Director of Student Recruitment for the College of Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources at the University of Missouri in Columbia, Missouri. Hi there, everyone. My name is Abby Wellborn with Iowa State University, and I am our West Coast Regional Rep based in Phoenix, Arizona. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Gualtieri. I'm the Director of Admissions and Enrollment Management here in Casting, Maine, all the way on the East Coast. And I'm across the, across the state in Alaska. So Amy, um, Amy Potter, the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Alaska Pacific University. So thanks and we look forward to talking to you more. Great, so quickly our uh, agenda for this evening, um, about the next 40 minutes or so, we're each going to give a presentation for about five to six minutes overview of our programs, and then we will leave time at the end for hopefully any questions we get or we can um, kind of have a panelist portion to address any questions that we, we tend to have come up quite a bit. So we'll go ahead and get started with the University of Nebraska, Lincoln. Uh, we are a large public research university located in, you guessed it, Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, we are comparable to the UCs for the state of California in that we are the flagship flagship, excuse me, institution for uh, the state of Nebraska with just over 20,000 undergraduate students from all over the country and the world. We are part of the Big Ten Alliance, which means that our Division I athletics are a big part of our Big Ten Athletic Conference. Um, what that means for you all is there are big game days. So while we are, there are a few big schools in California who have that big football team, the pride and the history is nothing compared to what we have in the Midwest. That school pride really having everyone decked out in red, those big game day traditions means you are part of something bigger in Nebraska. Uh, Lincoln is a quintessential college city that offers the benefits of a large city with the feel of a friendly Midwestern community and really offers a great, um, a perfect kind of mixture of city and nature with over 130 miles of hiking and biking trails. And speaking of nature, Nebraska offers something California doesn't have a whole lot of, which is a lot of wide open space. So you'll see from the other institutions here tonight that um, your, the location of the institution really lends itself to the areas of study. So while we have over 150 different programs as broad as our top ranked engineering and business programs to as specific as inclusive early childhood education um, or ceramics, Nebraska offers programs you'll have a hard time finding specifically in California such as our College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources. Um, in higher education, we love to use acronyms. So we'll be referring to um, our College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resor Resources as CASNR. Um, we have 31 academic programs and one pre-professional program. 
Our students are ready to tackle the big challenges and make their mark in the world. Our students are excited to find their career path, eager to gain hands-on experience, either by studying abroad, conducting research, or impacting their community through service. Um, Kasner offers additional scholarship, uh, scholarships specifically in their college. So on top of our merit scholarships that we offer, they also offer ones through their um, their specific college and our mission at Nebraska is really accessibility and affordability. So you will always have the opportunity to grow, learn and develop into who you want to be as a Kasner student. But obviously the big point um, is what are you going to study? And we hope you're going to choose something that you're really excited about. So these are all of our different programs from grassland to livestock, to fisheries, turf, land, turf grass, uh, forestry to climate. Our college covers all areas of agriculture and beyond. And I'll just highlight a couple of our programs. Um, our agribusiness major is in joint with our top ranked college of business with which also offers a supply chain management uh, major. So if you're interested in business or entrepreneurship, we do offer that major, but that's specifically through our College of Business. Uh, our food technology for companion animals is my favorite major. So from dogs and cats, birds and reptiles, companion animals, you know, have a specific nutritional requirement. So it's a very unique program that combines food science and animal science courses that can, can, compare, can prepare you, excuse me, for areas such as research, product development, quality assurance, things like that. Uh, we also have PGA Golf Management, which one is one of the nation's first golf, um, one of the few golf management programs accredited by the Professional golf Golfers Association, or PGA of America, uh, which is a pretty unique program. We also offer veterinary science, as you've seen there, um, as well as pre-veterinary medicine. Um, so if you want to become a doctor of veterinary medicine or a DVM, um, you should definitely become a pre-veterinary medicine program, um, become a part of it. Uh, you know, we select the best undergraduate program for you to prepare you for admission um, to go into that vet school. At Kasner, we're so confident that you're going to graduate and prepare for um, employment that we guarantee it through our Ensuring Your Future program. So it is a comprehensive approach to preparing Kasner graduates for their first position working in their chosen field. And it is the only program of its type at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and the only one of its type among our peer institutions. So Basically, our college guarantees that any Kasner student who graduates and completes this program uh, and actively seeks employment will receive at least one job offer relevant to his or her academic program within the first six months after graduation. Um, if you do not receive at least one employment offer, the college will pay for any course that is documented by an employer who interviewed you and found your degree program was lacking in a critical element. So we definitely are guaranteeing our students are employed after they graduate. And obviously we love hands-on research at our research institutions, hands-on experience. So these are just a couple of example with our on-campus greenhouses, our tractor test lab, or you could be hanging from trees on campus in our forestry classes. Research is happening at our Huskell uh, Agriculture Lab, our South Central Agriculture Lab, and our High Plains Agriculture Lab. So a lot of research going on. These are just some of the examples of those things that are happening on our campus. Uh, so for example, that's actually a typo. It says 35, it was 135 students uh, received stipend this summer for research projects. So we're really focusing on that out of class engagement including clubs and organizations. So this is just a snapshot of the clubs and organizations that we offer for students interested in agriculture. We also offer opportunities and housing for students to live with like-minded individuals. So we have living learning communities um, called Ag Futures, which is based on entrepreneurship, leadership, and service. And we have a brand new Exploring Companion Animals and Careers living learning community that is brand new this year. I won't touch on admissions too much because we want to make sure we get to everyone this evening, but I do want to uh, clarify that we have what is called assured admissions requirements, meaning that if you meet our performance requirement and our course core requirements, you are guaranteed admission as long as you fulfill all of your dates and deadlines. We do not require a letter of recommendation or an essay. And I really want to encourage all the students to check out our IB credential evaluation. We give three credits for theory of knowledge and basically three credits for any uh, standard level test and six credits for any higher level test for the most part. So definitely check that out. And I will leave my contact information. If you are applying this year as a senior, please reach out to me. I want to be able to give you a fee waiver code 
so you can apply to Nebraska for free. Um, so you can text that phone number, you can email me. Um, I want to make sure that you are having access and affordability to our university. And with that, I'll say go Big Red and I'll hand it over to my friend just now. Julie, hello, okay. Um, let me get to it, okay. Um, so hello, I'm Julie Scroggs. I'm the Director of Student Recruitment of um, the College of Agriculture, Food and Natural Resources at Mizzou or the University of Missouri. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you about CAFNR. Um, again, we don't make it too easy on students. So Nebraska has CASNR and we have CAFNR with an F. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about um, our degree programs and the, at the University of Missouri. So with the university, we are a little bit larger. We have about 30,000 students. We have students from all over the country um, and all over the world. And we really pride ourselves on being welcoming um, and making sure that all of our students feel like they belong and they're welcomed. Um, the university is one of six institutions that has a vet school, a law school, and a medical school in addition to a College of Agriculture and Engineering all on one campus. Um, so we really pride ourselves on the research aspect of that. We are a flagship institution, so research is really important at the university, um, but we're also a land-grant institution. So that means that we focus on teaching, teaching our students what our researchers are doing, researching new innovative ideas, and then communicating that with the practitioners um, in our state. Um, so we really wanna create access um, to Missourians and to the rest of the country. So with um, our college, with CAFNR, um, we have 12 different degree programs. And so this is a list of all of our majors, minors, and certificates. The majors are listed in bold. Um, so you can see we have traditional agriculture programs, but we also have biochemistry, which is great for um, students who are interested in going to medical school or dental school. They have about a 60% placement rate. Um, and for students who are interested in going to vet school, we have a really good option with our animal sciences program. They have about a 50% um, placement rate for our animal science students that apply to vet school. 50% of them are admitted. Um, so we're really proud of that. We really make sure that our pre-vet students are well prepared um, to go to our vet school at Mizzou or other vet schools around the country. Um, we also have our natural resource science and management program, and that's for students who are interested in maybe conservation, fisheries and wildlife, maybe marine biology, um, and for students who are interested in maybe exotic animals. We have a captive wild management minor, um, and we also have an equine science management certificate. Um, so there's lots of different things that our students can focus on, and even if you're you know, interested in sports. Um, we have a sport management program um, within our parks, recreation, and sport major. Um, so we have lots and lots of different things for you to focus on. Uh, very practical programs, lots of different jobs um, that are related to each of these programs. And just to go further in depth, um, just to give you a better idea of how the majors are organized. Um, so we have them kind of listed in a Venn diagram of management and communication, science and technology, and then leadership and policy. So you can see there's a lot of interdisciplinary, um, there's an interdisciplinary nature with our degree programs. We really want to make sure that our students have a lot of transferable skills. Um, we do have some of the hard sciences that kind of stay in the hard sciences, um, but still there's a lot of job opportunities for our students in those degree programs. And so within our college, within CAFNR, we have the CAFNR experience. And our students, we encourage them to have a RISE experience. So with the RISE experience, that is research, international, service learning, and experiential. So I'll kind of talk more about those in depth. So with research, so we have six different animal research farms, research and teaching farms. Um, so we have a beef, swine, equine, sheep, dairy and poultry. I think I've got all those. Um, six of those animal farms that our students get to have hands-on experience, but they also can do research. And we also have plant science um, research centers as well. Um, then we have a agricultural policy research center called FAPRI, um, but we also encourage our students to complete research through um, our stipends, through inter um, internships and that kind of thing. We also have international experience. So um, when it's safe to do so, we highly encourage our students to study abroad. 
Um, with our students, we have about 14 different countries that our students can travel to, and they're very, very hands-on. Um, so while you're taking classes, you might get to um, scuba dive and restore coral reef in Thailand, or you might get to um, work with a vineyard in France or Italy um, for a food science program. Um, so we have several programs that are related to each of our, ma each of our majors, um, and we encourage our students to complete this. It's a great way for students to stand out and get some cultural experience while they're in college. And related to service learning, with service learning, we provide several classes that are related to you serving the community, um, that are related to you getting out there um, and providing that kind of service to yourself as well. Um, we also encourage our students to get involved. At Mizzou, there are 600 different clubs, so there's something for everyone. Within our college, within Kaffner, we have about 60, so we're a little bit smaller, um, but there should be something for you to get involved in. Um, we highly encourage our students to do that, and there are several activity fairs that you can be involved in right from the get-go. And lastly, experiential. So we want you to have a job when you graduate, you want to have a job when you graduate, and it's our job to provide those experiences to you and to make sure that you're career ready. So part of that is helping you find part-time jobs, helping you find internships. Uh, we have our own career services um, center within our college in addition to what Mizzou offers. And so with that, we really help our students um, find those transferable skills um, and communicate them to employers. So just to recap, we have the Kaffner experience and through that we have RISE, so Research International Service Learning and Experiential. And I highly encourage you to check out our prospective student website um, on kaffner.missouri.edu. That's where our students have some videos um, so they can explain their, um, their experiences, their RISE experiences through their own student lens. And then lastly, we've got some tiger roars. So again, we want you to have a job when you graduate, um, and it's our job to help you do that. So 97% of our graduates within Kaffner have found a job or have gone on to graduate school within six months. And 94% of our students would choose Kaffner again, they would choose their major. So um, we feel that our students really um, like their experience, they felt like their classes were valuable, and just their student, overall student experience was really good. And lastly, we highly encourage that if you're interested in uh, applying to Mizzou, um, especially by fall in, for fall 2021, um, you do that soon, you apply to Mizzou, so you can apply to our scholarship deadline, which is December 1st. If you have any more questions, I'll leave my contact information up here. Again, I'm the Director of Career whoops, the Director of Student Recruitment, there we go, um, for Kaffner, and feel free to email if you have any questions for me and I will turn it over. I have a state. All right, thank you, Julie. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen next. Okay, can you give me a thumbs up if everybody can see my screen? Okay, sounds good. So I'm Abby with Iowa State University, and I want to start with where is Iowa State located? We are in the heart of the Midwest, just north of Mizzou, located in Ames, Iowa. We're going to be the largest school in the state of Iowa with about 33,000 students. All 50 states are represented at Iowa State, so coming from California to Iowa, you are not alone. And we also have 115 nations represented on campus, so a very diverse student body. Something to know talking about agriculture today, Iowa's core and home centered in agriculture. In Iowa, we have a seven to one pig to human ratio. We lead the nation in ethanol production, eggs, corn, soybeans. So agriculture is at the heart of what we do in the state of Iowa. And Iowa State University specifically, we started as an agriculture school. So this is a great place to start learning about opportunities to study in this field. Looking at the screen here, if you have an interest in any of these areas, we can find a major for you. 
So let's take a look at those interest areas and what majors might fit your interest. So in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, we're gonna have 4,000 students spread across these 20 different majors. One thing that's really nice at Iowa State is when you declare your major and you start day one, your freshman year, you are automatically in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences and automatically in your major. So that's nice to start that process right away. If you're looking at this list and you're like, I have no idea what of that I like, you can also be open option, but within the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. So still having access to those ag classes, but giving you a little more time to figure out your niche. The College of Agriculture and Life Sciences hands out scholarship money just to its students and they hand out the most. So they hand out $3.5 million of scholarship money just for their students. And on top of that, we have California specific scholarships as well as admission scholarships. And the admission scholarships at Iowa State are automatic. So that means if you have the number, it's automatically yours. Hey, Abby, um, can you start the presentation? We're not seeing the, the slides in advance. We just see the, the first intro slide. Okay, let me try again. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe the begin presentation. Um, do you see anything different now? Can you hit the from beginning? Hmm. Okay. Yep. Are you seeing it now? We're seeing the second slide, but it's got all the note pages on the side. Okay. All right, well, this works for now, and I'll just keep going and see if I can get something to work, as long as you can see my current screen. Thank you for the heads up on that one. So next up, let's look at some of those majors specifically and um, kind of get an idea of what involvement that they have had on campus. So first up, you'll see animal science. The Emily was an animal science major, and her internship experience involved working in a neonatal unit, taking care of newborn horses, um, and now she is a vet. So you can kind of see the track that she took through Iowa State. Animal science is one of the most popular majors for our students coming from California. One of the reasons is we do have vet med on campus, and our vet med program is the longest running in the entire nation. So we're really proud of that. Some tips though for you that may be considering being a veterinarian is getting a lot of volunteer experience. So you're gonna get a lot of that for your application as well as some people to write some letters of recommendation. So something to consider. Another fun fact about going to the vet med at Iowa State is you don't have to have four years of your undergrad completed. You can enter into vet med with only two years completed, if you complete the classes on the screen right there that you can see. Um, so lots of students are interested in that and a great way to save some money too. Another major we have is Wynn with environmental science. His internship was studying the water quality and stream preservation in India. And now he works at a conservation corporation in Minnesota. Alyssa with microbiology, she studied infectious diseases in labs and was the president of the pre-med club and now she is studying at Harvard Medical School. Kelsey, her major was ag systems technology. What did she do? She demonstrated and researched renewable fuels and now she works for the largest biodiesel company in the United States. And the last student that I wanted to show you was Jamie. Her major was food science. Some of her internships included working at a spice facility and uh, a winery. So now she's working at a winery in Iowa, at Iowa, um, improving the quality of that. 
There is tons to learn about agriculture at all these different colleges. And I want to give you a heads up, we have some virtual visits going on right now. And one hour of that virtual visit is learning about your major. So definitely sign up for that and get an opportunity to learn some more about our Iowa State majors. Next up, we're going to head to Maine. Okay, good evening. I am Kelly Gualtieri. I'm the Director of Admissions and Enrollment Management um, here at Maine Maritime Academy. Um, we are located on the coast of Maine. Today was out an absolute beautiful day um, that I was lucky enough to spend out on the vessels all day long with some of our Ocean Studies students who I will speak to you about today. Um, but just to give you a little bit of information, we are completely different than all of the schools you just heard from. So we are a small, state school. Um, we only have a thousand students um, max really at our campus. So it's usually slightly under a thousand students. Um, we're close to Acadia National Park. Our kids love the outdoors, um, but they also like the changing seasons. They like the leaves right now. Um, they can do everything from ice fish here um, to um, going skiing um, about two hours inland. Um, we have 26 states and five countries represented in our small student body, so we are pretty diverse. It is very coastal though, so our students do come a lot from the East Coast, the West Coast, and then from Texas. Um, we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. The best part about our campus is that we do not have any large lecture halls, um, so it's impossible for our students to hide in the back. Um, so most of our classes are about 20 to 25 students as a freshman. But what we prepare you for in industry and in life is really focused um, in the upper level classes where your classes will be anywhere from three to four students. Um, we are division three. Um, so our, our um, sea of red is a sea of blue, but it's much smaller level than anything you would see at Nebraska or any of the other schools that just spoke. Um, you know, we, we get along, we're a family, um, and we all support each other. Um, so we are a small campus. Um, we only have 30 students, um, clubs and organizations, but they really depend on the student body. So everything from scuba club um, to schooner crew, um, the, um, the uh, also um, we have uh, some unique clubs like the Lumberjack Group, we have the firefighters that help in town. 90% um, of our graduates are employed um, within 90 days of graduation. Um, and we really pride ourselves in that kind of process. Um, our students are here. They're pretty focused on what they wanna do um, and we help them get there. So talking about our ocean studies program, um, and that's that marine bio side, um, we actually have one department with six different majors. Um, so overall, our campus is 22 majors in four departments, um, and it's all STEM based, but this is really the side where you can do everything from focus on the organisms um, within the marine bio, or the, the marine diversity, um, and then the oceanography side, which is really the water and the currents and the geology of, of, the, of the ocean and the ocean um, world, and then the coastal and marine environmental science side, where everything really comes together and it looks at the human impact um, on, the, on both of those, um, the marine bio and the marine science kind of side. One of the things that makes us unique is that we actually have a dual major option. Um, so we are a maritime school. We do have students here in the other programs that wear a uniform um, pretty much all day, um, but that also affords us the opportunity to have a small vessel operations license um, and program. So some of our students in the Ocean Studies program will actually walk away from here with not only their degree, but a 200 ton near coastal license. So what that means is they can not only do the research, they can tag sea turtles, um, they can dive amongst the coral reefs, but they can also um, work on the vessels that take them out to the research. Um, so it gives them just a dual option. And when research dollars are tight, our students are, are actually um, getting the jobs over even more qualified um, you know, uh, uh, employees. 
Um, we also have a, a unique diving program. I know it sounds like it's probably pretty cold up here, but with a good wetsuit, it's okay. Um, we have eight different scuba courses. Um, and the one that our students get in the Ocean Studies program is really that, um, the scientific diving certification. Um, it really comes in handy with their program. What if you don't know which path? It's okay. The first year is all the same for all of these different majors. It allows you to explore and learn more in depth as to how you want to, to proceed. Um, I will tell you, I still don't know what I wanna do when I grow up. So if you don't know yet, don't worry, we will help you get there. What we do offer in our, in our mission statement, we talk about giving you the skills, knowledge to succeed in a global economy. And that, that really includes everything. So our students have a really hands-on kind of nature. Um, they wanna be out in the field. They are a community of ocean scientists. We use all of our different research vessels um, to do that here in Maine, um, but they also go all over the place. Um, and they, they really chart their own path in terms of what they wanna do from, from an ocean studies kind of side. Um, they have a great time. Um, they are a close uh, group of students. Um, they like to make videos. They like to play in the mud flats. Um, you know, they do some interesting different things, but they're getting dirty and they're doing the research. We are very student centered. Um, because we're such a small school, again, everyone knows you, not even in the different departments that you're in, but across campus. Um, we have a lot of students who will actually take other classes from other departments, whether it's the business department, whether it's engineering, um, whether it's the deck side in terms of the small vessel operations license. Um, everyone pretty much knows each other here. Um, and the world is your campus. So really the ocean laboratory is where most of our students focus, but we do have students from all over and they go all over, not just in the continental US, but they go diving in Belize, they go to the Philippines, um, they do some really cool exploratory things. Every major we have on campus also has a summer program. So whether it is field work, whether it's um, the students that are aboard different types of vessels, ships, um, it's all hands-on experience. Um, sometimes it's working in an aquarium. Um, if you're in our like pre-vet kind of track in the marine bio program, sometimes it's working on a vessel. Um, I was just with a student today who was talking about working on a salmon farm. Um, so again, it's really different. Um, every student has a unique opportunity to drive their path where they wanna go. And basically what you have to figure out and what will help you do is figure out where you will go. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Amy. Oh, we can't hear you, Amy. Thank you. <laughs> so, hi guys, I'm Amy with Alaska Pacific University. So thanks for joining us uh, this evening. I'm really excited to talk to you about some of the opportunities um, that we have for students with Alaska Pacific, especially kind of targeted at the agricultural um, sciences related majors, but kind of Alaska as a whole. Um, we're very similar to, um, you just heard from Kelly with Maine Maritime. So we're a very similar um, feel of a school. So we're located um, here in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, Anchorage is the Amy, we can't hear you again. Oh, ah, thank you. All right. Um, thanks for bearing with us with our technology issues today. Um, so like I said, we're located in Anchorage, Alaska. So Anchorage is the um, largest city here in Alaska. It's kind of the central hub for the state. So um, it has around uh, 300,000 uh, people. So it's the largest city, but still feels kind of like a big small town sometimes. 
Um, we, again, with the kind of that central hub, it's really easy to uh, fly into as well as get to other uh, regions across the state. Um, Alaska in general um, is huge. So one of the things you'll notice, we have over 46,000 miles of coastal habitat. This is larger than the shoreline of all lower 48 states combined. So it's, it's massive. If you spread it on a map of the lower 48, it goes from San Francisco all the way to Jacksonville, Florida. And a majority of the state would be kind of the, the middle Midwest states um, on the map. So it's a really unique place for students to get to study and go to school. There's a ton of different options um, that students can take advantage of. Um, we have 17 national parks, we, including um, the nas largest national park in the US, Ringel St. Elias. We've got um, 16 different wildlife refuges. Um, we have uh, 229 federally recognized tribes. And that's really important as we work with students to work with our tribal partners to really understand how to be the best stewards of the land that we can um, and take care of our resources. So um, again, we're, we're pretty small. So we have about 529 students. So we kind of went from large to small. <laughs> and um, that's across all of our programs. So that's undergraduate, master's, and our doctorate programs. So that's all of our students across all of our majors. Um, we have a eight to one student professor ratio. And so again, with um, the, something that we focus uh, a lot on is that project-based learning, um, experiential hands-on uh, learning for students. So when you're in a class, um, you know, that kind of um, similar feel to, to our partners in uh, Maine, where, you know, you, you can't necessarily hide. So the faculty want to um, have you engaged, be part of the discussion. You get a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, support from your faculty and the other students who are in the class with you. Um, so that's really exciting. So this is a little bit of a snapshot of some of our agricultural science related majors. Um, again, Alaska is beautiful. So Alaska is your classroom. It's all about getting you out into the field, out doing internships, junior practicums, uh, senior research projects, um, and connecting you to jobs and internships down the road. Um, so our marine environmental sciences program, it has concentrations in marine biology, earth and climate science, ecology, fisheries ecology, and aquarium and husbandry science. We've got sustainability studies, um, business and our Alaska Native Governance programs, um, and outdoor studies with land management, outdoor uh, leadership, outdoor entrepreneurship, snow science, and adventure therapy. Um, so one of the things across all of our programs, um, so this is just a look at some of our majors. We have uh, other majors across uh, um, different um, interest areas, but in with these programs all except business, they're part of our, what we call our Institute of Culture and Environment. And so there's again, a lot of that cross collaboration uh, for students. So they're, um, uh, the faculty are, um, you know, it's, it's kind of just the one institute and across the majors, um, they're working really closely with the different faculty and the different majors um, and students. They're sharing research projects. They're working on um, joint, uh, like internships and things like that. So there's a lot of uh, cross collaboration across uh, the different majors. Mm -hmm. So this is a quick little snapshot of um, just a, a sampling of some of the places that our students uh, wind up. So um, again, we have a really awesome advantage of um, especially being here in Anchorage, that's kind of all the major um, federal agencies, nonprofits um, kind of have center hubs um, here that uh, students get to take advantage of. Um, USGS, the US Geological Survey, um, they have a building here on campus. So students are connecting right away, just you know, going um, over to the office and working on uh, research projects, mapping projects, glaciology studies. Um, so going out to the glacier, taking different samples, um, working with the Borough of Land Management. Um, we do a lot of work, um, kind of forestry service, the national parks, um, kind of uh, alumni and students connected all across the state in all of those different areas that I talked about that are available here in Alaska to take advantage of. Um, 
One of the things too, uh, working especially in our marine environmental sciences program, a ton of work with the Department of Fish and Game, um, kind of in our, our back pocket and working on a ton of different uh, field and data collecting. Um, and students are really excited about the fact that they get to uh, learn about something, put it immediately into practice, um, kind of see that practical application, get out in the field, and then be able to provide some of that data to the folks that are making those policy decisions, um, especially um, salmon fishing is a huge uh, area for us. And so um, they're able to you know, work on some of those um, static salmon studies, put in uh, fish weirs to count um, the salmon runs coming through. And then they're be able to take those numbers and report them back up to the folks that are making the policy so that we're not over harvesting or um, really being responsible um, surge for the communities uh, that those runs are going through. So there's a lot of different um, opportunities. We also have a um, scientific dive program. So it's a great opportunity for students to connect, um, get a lot of certifications. Um, as you can imagine, you get cold water certified. <laughs> so you take that along with uh, the dry suit, everything like that. So if you, you can get cold water certified, you, you can probably dive anywhere. <laughs> and um, so students have a chance to get involved in, especially if they're interested in, in dive and have a dive club on campus. Um, we also have an octopus lab on campus. <laughs> so um, one of our professors does a lot of octopus research. Um, and so that's kind of a, a fun area for students uh, to get to be a part of in our aquarium technology class. Um, they'll have a chance to learn how to maintain the labs. Um, they go down and um, have different travel classes, both um, across Alaska, the lower 48 or international classes. Um, and they'll have a chance to get um, additional certifications, but learn how to maintain those. Um, if they're looking at maybe working on larger aquariums, we have students in um, Shed, the Georgia Aquarium, kind of all across the lower 48 and some of those larger um, Monterey Bay, um, different uh, aquariums. And um, last but not least, I was just going to mention um, that we have um, our admissions information down here. So free feel to connect with us, listen to some of um, our other presentations. We'll have virtual open houses. Um, our admissions requirements, uh, we are test optional, test free, test blind, <laughs> whatever you want to say. Um, so we don't look at the SAT, ACT admissions for the, uh, or SAT scores for the admissions process. Um, and that's not just COVID related, that's kind of across the board for us. And so um, typically a 2.5 or higher, uh, you would be admitted into the university. So let us know if you have any extra questions. Great, so it looks like we have just two minutes left. Um, so rather than taking full questions, do we just wanna run down real quick and say if any of us have changed because of COVID, any test optional, anything like that, just real quick. I will say for Nebraska, um, we are completely test optional this year for scholarships and admission. We also have a test optional um, option. Uh, you can still apply with a test score with an ACT or um, SAT score, but we also have a test optional, um, which requires a resume and personal statement. For Iowa State, for my seniors, you, we are test optional. You don't have to take the ACT, SAT. Maine Maritime went test optional as well. Um, and also for all of the merit money, it's based on GPA and class rank now too. Yep, and as I mentioned, we're um, test optional and our merit scholarships are based on the GPA award as well. Fantastic. Well, it looks like we're right on time. So we want to thank you all for coming. We hope you learned something about our institutions. Hopefully you took a screenshot of our information so that you can reach out to us individually to learn more about our programs and um, everything that our universities and institutions have to offer. So thank you all so much for joining us. Again, we hope you learned something new um, and we hope to connect with you all in the future. Have a great evening. Uh, thank you to all of our presenters. I just wanted to let you guys know that um, all the students who are signed up for this, you will get all their information. So you can contact them after the fact. And also this video will be sent to some local FFA chapters. So they'll share that with additional students. Um, so thank you for joining us. When you close this window, there'll be a, a link to a quick four question survey. Um, 
This is just one of many sessions being hosted, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions at college to career fairs connect.org. Um, and in about a week, you'll be able to find all these session recordings on the same website. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.